What's up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Caleb from Caleb's Aviation. Today I'm here with my friend Simeon again. What's up? And today we're going off somewhere very special. You want to say what we're doing today? We're going flying. Flying again. Here we Woo! go. Hope you enjoy the video. As soon as Simeon and I arrived at the airport today, November 572 Romeo Juliet, the red Cessna 172, which I've flown several times now, was starting up to head out on a flight. We were not flying her today, unfortunately. We were going to be in November 6860 Hotel, a 1975 Cessna 172, right here. Pretty soon, however, we got on board our Cessna and got ready to taxi out. Just as a reminder, we also now have air traffic control recordings, so I hope you enjoy those. And wouldn't you know it, on our taxi out, we saw 572 Romeo and Juliet departing. I have flown her about seven times now, and I'll leave a link to one of the videos up above. Pretty soon we made it to our area to conduct our run-up, right off the end of runway 24, as we got ready for departure. And right in front of us was November 1377 Sierra, the all-glass cockpit Cessna 172 I flew on my last flight, linked up above. I don't see anyone, just double check. Beat off the brakes. This is a reminder as we take off, if you're enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel, turn the notification bell to on, leave a like, and leave me a comment. I'd appreciate it. Pretty soon, however, we were up in the air, leaving Ann Arbor for this sunset flight, which would soon become a night flight, as I later found out. As we climb out of Ann Arbor, I couldn't have asked for better weather for my first flight back. I mean, the clouds were nice and high, and nothing seemed to be problematic. Also, the lights of the city below are always cool on any night flight, but especially cool when you enjoy them. That camera's working all right for you. There's downtown Jackson. Tonight's flight would take us right through the center of downtown Jackson, flying along I-94, one of the busiest interstates in all of Michigan. That's also a helpful tip someday. If you're ever lost and don't know where you are, just look for a local highway. They usually only run a certain direction. Onto our actual route this evening, our flight would take us out of Ann Arbor Airport, up over toward Grass Lake, into Jackson County Airport, performing a touch and go on the runway, circle around trying to find Spring Arbor, Michigan, where the blue dot is, being unable to actually see it at night, and heading back to Ann Arbor, at a cruising altitude of 4,500 feet this evening. Tonight's weather was perfect as I mentioned, and flying here in the Cessna was a very surreal experience for me, after not flying in one for literally hundreds of days. Pretty soon it was time to descend out of the clouds and begin our approach into the Jackson County Airport. As a reminder, we would be doing a touch and go, meaning we would touch down on the runway and then add power back and get back up in the air, but I'll let the footage do the talking. This was also quite a slow descent into the airport. As I mentioned, we were at nearly 4,500 feet in cruising altitude. Eventually, Jackson Airport did come into view, as we lined up for runway 14 to make our approach. Also, Cessna 6860 Hotel has quite a beautiful panel. It's very modern, surprising for a plane its age. There was also a full moon this evening, which was nice, but sometimes a full moon can be disconcerting to have a bright light up in the sky. Also, if it had been foggy or cloudy, sometimes it can make you lose your sense of depth perception due to lots of light on the runway. However, I was plenty happy to see the pappy lights, meaning I was lined up nice and even. Now for the runway, 
don't screw this up. And overall, that landing was pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. After 673 days without flying the Cessna, I call that a win. But pretty soon we continued the second part of this touch and go, adding power back to the airplane to get us back up in the air. And just like that, back up in the air we go, leaving Jackson Airport behind as we start our turn off of runway 14 to circle around and head back east toward Ann Arbor. Also, we can't forget about my buddy Simeon back there taking pictures for us. However, I do apologize again for the horrible quality of footage as it got dark super fast and there's not much to see up here. We were able to spot the full moon right off our port side wing, as we continued our turn circling back toward the east. Also behind us in a minute, we will see the lights of Jackson Airport fading into the distance. As a reminder, these lights are radio controlled, but more about that later. The way the light in the sky played with the clouds was truly amazing today. Also there's the beacon light back there, which you can really see once it's dark. Pretty soon Ann Arbor Airport came into view with their pilot controlled lighting. Just as a reminder, pilot controlled lighting means I click the microphone five times and on come the lights. I know you couldn't see it, but I promise it's cool. So pretty at night. Yeah, I like this. It's really nice. Those blue lights guiding in. Here we are, Simeon, touching down. Alright. There's a the beacon we saw way back there. These ones, Simeon, are taxiway signs when they're black like that, with yellow backgrounds. Oh, like the A2. Mm -hmm. That one that says Bravo, with a B with the arrow is taxiway Bravo, up ahead of us. After a very long taxi, we pulled up to the fuel pumps to fill up the plane and get ready to pull the plane back into the hangar. And up there is the moon again. Now, it's time for some reflection. Pardon the joke about the moon and reflection. You could also see several planes coming into land behind us. I also got a picture next to the Skyhawk, which I never used for a thumbnail. So that's frustrating. As I mentioned earlier, this was my first flight back in a small plane. My last one was all the way back in July of 2022. For those of you who remember that flight, and that video in Skyhawk 1377 Sierra. However, something after that flight happened that changed my life forever. Some of you may remember when I made those two behind the scenes videos at University of Michigan's Survival Flight Rescue Flight System. Well, I made those videos mostly because of my connection with U of M and Survival Flight. For those who don't know, since birth I've had a congenital heart defect. When I was about 16 years old, I was told I would eventually need a heart transplant after having surgeries as a baby. Two years later, when I was 18, I took that flight in 1377 Sierra and later checked into the hospital to wait for my heart transplant. There will be more all about this story coming out very soon, but for now, enjoy these scenes from those videos I took behind the scenes at University of Michigan Survival Flight. Also, check out both videos, linked in the end of this video. However, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed. I really enjoyed this video flying the Cessna again, and there's lots more coming soon, including that whole video all about my story with Survival Flight, coming soon. You know the drill. As always, until next time, I'll be wishing you blue skies and tails.